Welcome to the PHP 101 screencast with me, Phil, from Be It So Web Design. First things first, apologies. <laughs> Last screencast, I declared the episode number as 16. It was 17. It was me having a brain fart and yeah, it all went a bit meh from there on. So, apologies for that. A bit back on track, hopefully. Right, this week is episode 18. Got it right that time. Episode 18 um, is going to be something, uh, in a way, a little bit different, okay? Um, this is this episode is in response for a um, comment on one of the YouTube videos, uh, or one of the videos on YouTube, uh, from someone who calling themselves Codewave, basically asking if I could remake one of the screencasts, uh, but in a better quality. Um, the screencasting question was about pulling data from my SQL databases. Right, no problems. Uh, technology I'm using now, software I'm using now, is a bit more p better, uh, a bit more powerful than what I was using in the past. So therefore, here we go. This should be a lot better. Right, we have a database. Woo! In our database called Screencast, we have a table called Users. In the table to Users, we have two users worth of data. Plain and simple, just a first name, last name, email address, username, password, and obviously they have an ID. Nice and simple. First things first to make clear though, here, just for this case, I've got the passwords in plain text. Do not, do not store your users' uh, passwords in plain text. You're asking for trouble and you're incorrectly dealing with people's data, okay? For this, it's just demonstration, it doesn't matter. But please, I beg of you, do not store your users' data uh, passwords in plain text. Encrypt it. But that's not what the screencast is about, this one. So therefore, I haven't done encryption. That may be something I may do in the future. But there we go. So, onwards and upwards. What we're going to have. At the moment, I have my folder, which all it has in it is a pro empty project folder and the SPL class loader. Okay, link for the SPL class loader will be kept in the show notes on my site, but also if you look on my site in the videos section for the last screencast, episode 17, not 16, 17, there is a link to get the SPL class loader. Right, here we go. So we're gonna need uh, an index page. We're gonna need um, database connection stuff and then we're going to need a way of getting hold of that user data now what i'm going to do in that is different to when i did it this last time is that i'm going to do it in an object oriented um php style whereas last time it wasn't and this time i'm going to use the uh mysql i way of getting hold of uh, the information just because it's more up to date and better uh, also the bog standard mysql stuff um, yeah, I believe has been deprecated um, so yeah um, so yeah just let's go with this version it's better right so we're going to need an index file okay nice and simple start for this and let's just call it index.php and there's not going to be uh, well at the moment there's not going to be a lot in this index file Literally, all we're going to do so far is just uh, set up the class loader so it works, okay? So we're going to do require uh, once, not ints, require once, and it's uh, SPL class loader.php. Uh, then we have to initiate, instantiate the SPL class loader class. So uh, we're going to just put a class loader. Uh, equals new uh, SPL class loader. Uh, it's done the preceding backslash, which is just something that kind of bugs me that I really need to change that setting, to be honest. But anyway, everything's going to be in the parent namespace of project, which you have to give it, uh, take what it's going to be, and because it's in the root, I'm just going to do duh, like so. And then you have to start the class loader running by doing class loader uh, register. 
there we go. Class loaders set up, ready to uh, do our bidding, basically. So, what shall we put first? What I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the configuration details for the database connection in a configuration class. Um, just because it it's easy to put it there in one place. Uh, you're not going to go through all your code to try and find where you got it to edit it if you change from local dev to um, de 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 deployment. That's the term I was looking for. So in our project uh, namespace, I'm going to create a new folder uh, called config because this may not be the only uh, config file that you have. Okay, and then inside there, I'm just going to just do a, a config class. Okay, because this may not only hold just the database configuration, it may hold some other bits of configuration for your site. Okay, so this is going to be in the namespace of project and config. Okay, let's just uh, delete out some of this crap that NetBeans puts in that we don't want. Um, and obviously, we're going to document this prob properly because I am doing it in the um, OOP style, okay. Um, it's package of project config, and this is a class of config. So there's my documentation documentation block at the top. Missing bits and pieces. You add what you wish. Copyrights, things like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to put in a simple function. Uh, called I'm going to call it get db config, which literally is just going to return an array of the configuration data, the, the the connection data basically. So this is going to be a public function. Helps if I type right. We're called get db config. And just quickly whack in the dot block for that uh, of get db config. And that's going to return an array. So just simple as of return array. Simple as. <laughs> I keep saying simple as for some reason. I don't quite know why. So we're going to need to put in here uh, the information we need. In this case, it's going to be username, password, URL, and the database we want to target for all our queries. So I'm going to go username. In this case, just because it's devin locally, it's going to be root um, password. Or well, on my local dev setup, it is literally just password. I think that's the case for most people, to be honest. Um, URL in this case is localhost. That might be the same when you deploy. Uh, it might not. But there you go, you've got somewhere to set it now. And DB name, uh, in this case, it is screencast. There we go. That's our configuration file, nice and done and dusted. Brilliant. So, next. Oh, don't know if you may have just seen that. My screen just went a bit bonkers for a second. Next, we're going to um, put set up a class to deal with the actual connection. Okay, so I'm going to create a new namespace for database based stuff of DB. Okay, and then in there, I'm going to create a new uh, class and I'm going to call that connection and tell it what its namespace is, which is project DB. Wait for this to load because my machine's just decided to run slow on me as usual when I'm recording for some reason. It loves running slow on me just to annoy me. Okay, um, so it's just update this dot block. And the package is project and db. So here we go. What I'm going to need for my connection stuff. Well, what I'm going to need, I'm going to, need to bring in the MySQI 
MySQLi class and also the config class. Well, I'm going to need use statements for both of them. So let's just quickly add them. So use MySQLi and use um, project config config. So now we've got those in. I'm now going to break up the stuff to do with the MySQLi connection over, uh, in this case, three functions. Um, to make life basically sane, I'm going to put a, a class variable in. So the information, the, the class is, the MySQLi class is shared across all these functions. So what I'm going to do is just do a protected dollar MySQLi. And let's just write the dot block for that. And the var is backslash my SQLI. This is obviously coming up. The dot block in here is meant to be able to fix standards. PSR. Read about it. It's important you should start learning this stuff. So my SQLI. So here we go. We've got a class variable for me to put my SQLI connection into. Now I'm going to create a protected function. called a start db connection there we go that seems to make sense now what am i going to need to do for this well in this i'm obviously going to need to instantiate um the uh, config class um so i can get access to the config and then also obviously then set up the mysqli connection start the connection so dollar config equals uh, new config nice and simple so now I've got access to my config of information brilliant now let's set up the my the instantiate my skill I and actually basically start the connection so that's simple as dollar this my SQLI equals new my SQLI brackets now we need to put in this the information for the connection because otherwise this is going to go oh well, I don't know what I'm meant to do where is your database where's your username stuff like that so we're going to put this information into here inside these brackets this has to go in a specific order okay now at the moment we're only worrying about four out of the potential six variables information you pass to it in this case, we're worrying about URL, username, password, and database name. And it must go in the order of URL, username, password, database name. Uh, then I believe it then goes on to port and sockets. But there we go. So let's give it the URL of where our database is. So dollar config get db config. And because we give it an array, we can just use true use the URL key, uh, your array keys. Uh, okay. So that's the URL given to it. Next is the username. You get the config of a username. And then next is config get a db connection or get sorry get db config uh, it's password and then finally config get db config of the uh, database name which I just called db there we go that is now the function that basically starts and creates a connection to the database. Nice and simple. Obviously, I've made this protected. Basically, uh, it, it, I just feel it's better to do that, okay? Um, this could be a, a private, if I really wanted, which would stops other code messing up this connection. But I'm just leaving it as protected for now. 
Okay, now I'm going to need a public function that actually returns the connection to me so then I can do stuff. Query the database and so on. So, let's just create a public function called uh, get db connection. Uh, now, what I need to do in this is I need to trigger this start db connection. Simple. Dollar this start db connection. That's now created the connection. Brilliant. But then obviously I want to return the um, uh, the connection so we can do stuff because obviously this is going to have an at return of my SQLI and simple the way we're doing that is as simple as return dollar this my SQLI there we go so now we have a way of creating the connection and we have a way of getting the connection uh, in a class so we can query the database I'm going to add one more function to this, which is a public, not a little big, public function of a close uh, DB connection. Always wise because you don't want to have hundreds of connections open to your database because it's always bad. In theory, it may close itself, but you never know. Excuse me while I take a drink then. So the way to close the connection is simple as of a simple case of dollar this my SQLI close simple and then obviously keep your standards up write a dot block which doesn't take any parameters to return anything so it's just literally giving it the class name. So that is now our connection stuff written. Brilliant. So what we're going to do, we're going to now create a user class. And what this user class is going to allow us to do is, I'm going to basically have two functions in it. It allows us to do two things. One is to get a user's details by their ID number. And the other one is to literally just get all users' data. Uh, so yeah, nice and simple in a way. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user namespace because in your project you may have multiple different things to do with users, so it makes sense to have a user namespace. And then I'm going to create a uh, class called user, which is just going to be responsible for getting hold of users' information and stuff like that. So, project um, user is the namespace for that. Let's wait for this to load because I say NetBeans is running slow, but actually not necessarily NetBeans, it's most likely just my PC. So we've got a project of user, and we're gonna need to get our bring in our database connection. So we're just gonna go project DB connection. So we now have access to the class when we want it. And just tidy up this bit of dot block project and user so there we go right we get I say I'm gonna have two functions I'm gonna write the first function now though um, let's start off with the getting user by ID okay so this be a public function get user uh, by ID and obviously we're gonna have to pass it an ID uh, into it so it knows what it's gonna get basically so let's start our connection or get our connection should I say so dollar DB equals new connection so we now have our connection active ready for us to query it what I'm going to do is now just put into a variable the actual query of what I'm going to ask the database, in which this case is going to be select star from users where ID equals dollar ID. 
It's nice and simple. So we're saying select everything, all the thing you can find from the table users where the, the ID equals this ID. Simple. Now to actually run the query. So I'm going to have a dollar result because I want somewhere to put all the information we get back. And then dollar DB uh, get DB connection. And then query with the dollar query. So we're now running the query and getting back information. Well, we've got no way of using that at the moment. So we need to return this information in a way so we can use it. Okay, and what we're going to do is um, I'm going to put a dollar return and then let's go dollar result and use the function of fetch a sock or association. That basically gets all the information back to me in an array. So it's easy for me to use. Now, at this point, we're finished with the connection for this function. So I'm going to do dollar $db close when this wakes up. Close db connection. And then return the return. Now, let's just quickly write the documentation for that. Nice and simple. It's returning an array. Parameter it's taken is an integer. And the function's called get user by ID. Simple. Right, now let's use it. Okay, um, right. First things first, we need a use statement to go and get hold of the user class. So, uh, use project user user. Now, uh, let's instantiate the class. So, user class equals new user. This is running slow again for some reason just to annoy me. There we go, it's caught up with me now. <laughs> you may have heard I actually finished typing well before then. <sighs> it's just been a pain in the backside. It's partly because I've just upgraded to Windows 8.1.1 and it's doing funky stuff for some reason. So anyway, uh, we now have our user stuff, yay! So. Let's get hold of the user's data. So dollar user equals a dollar user class. Get a user by ID. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to just put number one. So now we've got hold of the user's data. What can we do with it? Well, just for now, I'm going to do a for each on the data. just so you can see all the stuff you're going to get back. Dollar key, dollar val. This way we're going to get the key, the uh, array key as well as the value. And I'm literally just going to echo it out just to, so you can see what you're going to get. So uh, that's um, dollar val. And I'm going to make sure I put a break line in just to um, make sure everything's clean on its own line just to make stuff nice and easy to read. So if I go to the index and refresh, fingers crossed, here we go. See, got all the user's data for the user ID number one. Now on the user ID's number two's information, uh, let's just go and change this to a number two. Save, refresh, it went slow, but here we go, user ID number two, John Smith, me at email.com, blah, 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 simple. Where you would use this information, say you wanted to say hello to your user when they've logged in, okay, 
you would um, simply just go like basically use it as an array. So dollar user. Uh, oh, let's just say um, echo. Um, let's put another break line in first. Hi. Dollar user. Um, first name. Now these array keys are literally just the table names, aka the column names in the table. So that's how you know which what to call it. And refresh. Hi John. There we go. Treating it like an array, using it as an array, and we've managed to get the information we wanted. Brilliant. So that is how to literally just get hold of one rows of information. What if you wanted to get hold of all of your users' data? I don't know, say you wanted to send out a mass email. You need to get hold of all the email addresses at the database for all your users so you can send that email. Okay. So back to the user class. Now I'm going to create a, a new function, um, which is going to be called uh, get all users. So uh, we just go public function get all users. And yet again, we just need to get the DB connection first. So new connection. And then write the query. And the query is nice, straightforward, and simple. Of select star from users. And then same as before, we want to hold our results. Okay, so results um, dollar db get db connection query dollar query. So now we're querying the database with this query of select everything from users. Okay, all rows from it. Now, we could try returning this. Um, if I did a fetch association, it would pick up the first row and mess up. So we need a way of returning it in a way we can use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a while loop over everything. And then uh, in that while loop, I'm going to put everything into an array and then return the array. OK, so I'm going to go while dollar row equals results fetch sock I'm going to go uh, dollar values array dollar row nice simple and then after we've got all that information we want to shut down our connection close db connection and then return the values obviously we need to write our documentation and then get all users so now we have our function <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is, <sighs> sorry, get my breath back. I'm just going to put in a, a couple of break lines, just so we can see this a bit nicer. And then just go uh, users. We want to put all this information in so we can get hold of it. User underscore class. Get all uh, users and then we're going to for each over it all but this time we're going to do it a bit different because we're going to have to for each and for each again 
because we obviously we've got all the different users information mixed together in one array so we need to break that out separately and then once we break out separately then get all the information out for each of those users so for each uh, dollar users as dollar user and then straight away again for each dollar user as dollar key dollar val okay um obviously if you're literally just wanting to get emails you don't email addresses you don't need to do this uh, dollar key val you as soon as you've hit this done this first for each uh you can then treat this as an array like you did here okay but i'm just doing it just so we can demonstrate what information we are actually getting out for each person and so in this case we're just going to echo dollar key equals dollar val and put a break line after each one of those records and I'll save that and refresh my page fingers crossed when it loads bah damn it I've misspelt I've just basically hit a typo so if I just go back to my user class and just delete yeah Re save that again and go back again and refresh minor typo as you can see we've now got all the users information coming out very nicely for us so that is it that is how simple using OOP and using MySQLi, you can get hold of information out of the database. Woohoo! Um, let's just, I'm gonna expand on this slightly, just for fun, why not? And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna basically allow us to put a variable at the top so we can choose which user's information we want. And then if that variable's not there, we're gonna get everyone's. So, go back to this and go back to my index. And be after we've instantiated the class, we're going to just do an if statement. So if is set, uh, get get super global, and I'm going to give it the, the value, the um, ID of ID, basically. Okay, uh, and then so as soon as we get to the end of this bit, I'm going to do that. Okay, and then do an else. Typos are plenty today. Okay, now let's just clean this code up a little bit. When my machine stops messing me around. Okay, oh no. I'm about to leak from the wrong bit then. So this is going to be the else statement where we get all the users information and the if statement. So if uh, ID is set, the super global, uh, therefore we're going to get to hold of a specific user's information by going string underscore get in capitals ID. Simple. Let's prove it works. I'll refresh no variables on the end of the array uh, the url so we've got everyone's but i do question mark id equals one boom user one's id uh, user one's information and then two we get user two's information that is it that is how simple this is to do woohoo and that is the end of this screencast okay more information is available at my website of bhsowebdesign.com, which I think I've just uh, typoed. Oh, no, I haven't. Shocking. Um, where there is a blog, which uh, is kind of showing a bit weird at the moment. There's a couple of posts, one or two posts missing, unfortunately. Um, 
that's something I need to figure out why that is happening. Uh, but there is also though all my existing uh, videos uh, ready for you to um, peruse at your leisure. As I said as well, um, if you go to my previous screencast, episode 17, not 16, 17, there is a link when it loads here for the SPR class loader that I used to get it from GitHub. Um, it's a just the, the one of the best ones I know out there. It's rock solid and works. Okay. Um, do follow me on Twitter at BlackOrgSO. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, just search for PHP 101 Screencast. Um, yeah, I really need to figure out why this blog's messing in our hand. And you can uh, Skype me a big Skype button on my site. But that is it for this time. Um, I know it's a bit of a shock. I've done two screencasts in a week of each other. Shocking. Um, I'm hoping to uh, get another one up very soon. And uh, yeah, also just, I say, follow me on Twitter, check out on YouTube. If you want to contact me, you can contact me via the contact form. But until next time, uh, keep coding, keep playing. Play with this because it's so simple and fun and easy and uh, yeah keep coding have fun bye